Radio is on the air. ship scarcely 90 feet long, bound for the almost mythical island of Tahiti. Commanded by Lieutenant William Bly, the greatest sailor of his time, but a tyrant and a driver of men. The bounty was lashed by terrific storms, becalmed in deadly doldrums under the merciless sun for weeks at a time. Finally, the crew, half-starved and beaten into near madness, mutiny. Under the leadership of first mate Fletcher Christian, they took command of the ship. Let's go back through the years on the pitching decks of the bounty as she sails into the uncharted southern seas. It is early morning, and Captain Bly is in his cabin. Before sailing from England, he plundered the ship's stores and sent supplies ashore to his home. Because of this, the men have been put on half rations. Captain Bly, played by Charles Lawton, has summoned his mate, Fletcher Christian, portrayed by Clark Gable. Now for the scene. You sent for me, sir? No. Yes. Good job for you, sir. Sit down. Had your breakfast? Yes, thank you, sir. I want you to sign the ship's table, list of all supplies issued on the outward voyage, and certify and sign. Raise the island any time now. The bad voyages, voyages go. All hands accounted for. Only six down with scurvy. Five with scurvy, one with flogging. Correct, Mr. Christian, does you credit. Five with scurvy, one with flogging. But we're still under canvas. Mr. Bly, I can't sign this book. No such amounts have been issued to the men. Now look here. You've signed day books before with a few extra kegs and the ship never carried. I have, sir. Why not? We all do it with the fools if we didn't on a lieutenant's pay. And we'll throw away enough to keep me out of the gutter when I'm too old for the service. Yes, well, I understand the gutter's prerogative. Ordinarily, I wouldn't mind. Why is this case different? Because the captains I've served with before didn't starve their men. They didn't save money by buying up the stinking meat that you put aboard at Tenerife. They didn't buy yams that were sick of a pig and force them on their crew. Silence! They didn't call them in thieves and flog them to the bone because they complained about it. You impudent scoundrel, sign that book. I refuse. And you have no authority that can make me. I haven't. I'll show you authority. All hands out. All hands out. Very good, sir. Ship's company, sir. Mr. Christian, step forward. If any officer, mariner, or soldier, or other person in the fleet shall disobey any lawful command of any of his superior officers, every such person being convicted of any such offense shall suffer death or such punishment as shall be inflicted on him by the sentence of a court-martial. Mr. Christian, you will sign this book. Mr. Bly, ship's company will bear witness that I sign in obedience to your orders. And remember, sir, I shall demand the court of inquiry in England. You mutinous dog. Retract that, sir. I will repeat it. You're a mutinous dog. Mr. Christian. And ho! Through your stations. Or a of the wheel. Let me the king. Off the bounty's bow lies the mystic island of Tahiti. The smoldering flames of mutiny were for the time being forgotten by the crew. Friendly natives welcomed the men and their work on the island was broken by spells of lazy contentment. Romance budded under the tropical moon, 
and Fletcher Christian found the soft caresses of a native girl most alluring. Young midshipman Roger Byam became fascinated with the beautiful Princess Tahini, but the call to duty eventually took them away, and the bounty sailed for the West Indies. Again, the tyranny of Captain Bly becomes unbearable. Deserters from the ship were kept in chains and starved. Scurvy descended on the crew. At last, the breaking point is reached, and Fletcher Christian leads the mutiny. In this, he is opposed by young Byam and others loyal to the service, if not to their tyrannical captain. In the scenes to follow, we hear the voices of Charles Lawton as Captain Bly, Clark Gable as Fletcher Christian, and Francho Tone as Midshipman Byam. Christian has just found a deserter, dying in his chains, and has released him against the orders of Captain Bly. Thank you, Mr. Christian, sir. Murdering butcher. I've had enough of this bloodshed. He's not master of life and death on a quarter deck above the angels. McCoy! Quill! I'm sick of blood! Bloody backs! Bloody faces! Fly, you give me your last command on this ship! We'll be men again and we hang for it! Are you ready for anything, eh? Aye. I release those men! You think in the ship? You can yes, leave. mutiny! Pass the word! Seize the arms, ship! Come on! Oh, oh, it? We've been waiting for this! Let me out of here! 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 After the mutiny, Fletcher Christian commands the bounty. The mutineers force Captain Bly and a few who are loyal to him into a small boat to cast them adrift at the mercy of the sea. This drastic action is opposed by Midshipman Byam. Please, Mr. Christian, don't send me in the boat. We'll all be drowned. Please, send to the boat. You may stay on board if you like without joining us. No, thank you, sir. All right. End of the boat, Mr. Fly. Mr. Christian, I must beg you for the last time to return to duty. I'll pawn my honor that not a word will be said of this mutiny. If you had any honor, there'd be no mutiny. But you're taking my ship... My ship? You're not fit to have a ship. Besides, if I leave you on board, the men will murder you. I'll take my chances against the law. You must take yours against the sea. Into the boat, sir. Everybody forward! All right, the end of all blood. What, sir? You're not leaving him adrift. they will starve or drown. That's Bly's affair now. But your other friends, Purcell, Morgan. Do you think I don't know? Do you think I wanted this? Then call the boat back. No. Call it back! No! These men have been in hell for weeks. I couldn't stand it any longer. Then I must go with Bly. There's no room by him. Then I call on you men. All of you. Return to duty. Don't get you to do <laughs> Give me that jacket. Give me that. Take him below. And so Captain Bly and his men drifted off into unknown seas. And Fletcher Christian and his mutineers turned the prow of the bounty toward the far western horizon and the strangest adventures ever experienced by man. Years later, before an English court-martial, Captain Bly and Midshipman Byam meet again. Now Byam is on trial for his life, and his revengeful captain is ready to testify against him as a mutineer. Surrounded by the officers of the naval court, under the low-ceiling cabin of a British man-of-war, the trial proceeds. But a circumstance occurred on the night before the mutiny which should have aroused my suspicions. Going on deck, I found Fletcher Christian and Roger Byam talking together at the rail. I heard Roger Byam say, you can count on me. I heard Christian reply, good, that settled them. I saw them shake hands. I realized afterwards that they were plotting to seize the body. But that's not true, Captain Bly. Lord, General, let me explain. If the prisoner so desires, he may question the witness. Captain Fly, you have not repeated all my talk with Fletcher Christian. You must have heard him tell me about his home in the Cumberland. I did not. Well, did you not hear him ask my promise that if for any reason he did not return, I would go to his parents and tell them what had happened? I did not. My Lord, I swear before God in this court, that was the content of my talk with Fletcher Christian. It had nothing whatever to do with mutiny. 
Have you anything to say before the sentence of this court is passed upon you? My Lord, much as I desire to live, I'm not afraid to die. Since I sailed on the bounty over four years ago, I've known how men can be made to suffer worse things than death. Cruelly. Beyond duty. Beyond necessity. Captain Bly, you've told your story of mutiny on the bounty. How men plotted against you, seized your ship, cast you adrift in an open boat. A great venture in science brought to nothing. Two British ships lost. But there's another story, Captain Bly. Of ten coconuts and two cheeses. Of a man who robbed his seamen, cursed them, flogged them. Not to punish them, but to break their spirit. A story of greed and tyranny and of anger against it, of what it cost. One man, my lord, would not endure such tyranny. That's why you hounded him. That's why you hate him, hate his friends. And that's why you're beaten. Fletcher Christian still free. But Christian lost too, my lord. We all lost on the bounty. If Christian's alive, he's an outlaw, hiding in despair from his countrymen. God knows he's judged himself more harshly than you could judge him. No finer man ever lived. I don't try to justify his crime, his mutiny, but I condemn the tyranny that drove him to it. You gentlemen know the uses of authority. You exact the law of the sea. But the letter of the law is one thing, the spirit is another. I don't talk for myself alone here, nor for these men you condemn. I speak in their names, in Fletcher Christian's name, for all men at sea. These men don't ask for comfort, they don't ask for safety. If they could speak to you, they'd say, let us, let us choose to do our duty willingly. Not the choice of a slave, but the choice of free Englishmen. They ask only the freedom that England expects for any man. Oh, if one man among you believed that. One, one man! He could command the fleets of England. He could sweep the seas for England. If he called his men to their duty, not by flaying their backs, but by lifting their hearts. Their hearts, my lord. That's all. Charles Lawton, Clark Gable, and Francho Tone.